For a good majority of this chapter, Takamaro is getting his ass whipped all over the place by Bogey Woods, but really the ending I thought was just masterfully done. Bravo. Toriko, gourmet number 80, pre-shot routine. <laughs> well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and just bone-jarring, crippling, bloody mess of a tale of Toriko. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with uh, really Takamaru going head-to-head -head with uh, Bogey Woods and uh, Bogey revealing what his power was, kind of being able to, uh, you know, jump uh, from body to body, but really just actually take over the body, the skeleton of that body. Uh, so just kind of a creepy, weird power, but really the chapter uh, and, the, and the volume ended off with uh, it not looking too good for Takamaru. So that is uh, obviously where things left off. Here we are diving headfirst into volume number 10, and we see a colored version, which is the first time I've seen, of uh, Tommy, which makes him look even more uh, like a her, uh, mainly because of the features and, of course, the pink hair. Uh, kind of a dead giveaway to me. But nonetheless, different strokes for different folks, that's fine. That is how the chapter left off, though, and this one picks up right after, and the entire focus in this chapter is great. And the thing, one of the things I like about Toriko is it does a nice job of sometimes going and compartmentalizing those chapters and having a chapter that focuses, or two, that focuses solely on a fight between two characters or a character and kind of their particular path and trajectory. Sometimes that doesn't work in deterring you and detracting you too much from the overall plot can be a little frustrating, but in Toriko, I believe at least thus far, it works very well. So, without further ado, we get right into it. So this, again, this is very much just the, uh, the you know, the Bogey versus, Bogey Woods versus Takamaru uh, chapter. And it, it starts out and Takamaru goes and, you know, he winds up using his bottle opener move on Bogey and, uh, and, and it has no effect. And he goes and he's like, listen, you know, and, and, and Takamaru's freaking, man. He's thinking in his head, he's like, what the hell, man? I should have just dislocated, you know, this and that in his spine. And then they give you a whole breakdown of the actual spinal cord, the spinal column, uh, the neurotransmitters. And, and, the, and basically, it's the building blocks of, of your entire existence as far as being able to stand and walk upright, move, do the things that I'm doing right now. Um, because the fact that it really, it, it, it's, it, it houses so many bundles of nerves, Obviously, the neurotransmitters that go and transmit the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the uh, transmit so you can make the action, transmit the signals so you can actually make the actions from your brain uh, through your spinal column to your various appendages, and, uh, and and ultimately, I mean, at the very least, he was he was thinking they should have been paralyzed, you know, from the from the legs down. Um, so then we go and we find out though about Bogey, right? Bogey goes and he's like, the typical body has 230 bones or something along those lines, 206, 230, whatever. A majority of those are actually in the hands and feet, believe it or not, a good portion of them. But we wind up finding this dude's got like over 4,000 bones and they actually show the makeup of a skeleton. This guy's got bones where you shouldn't have bones. But even if you go and you snap or dislocate his spinal column, he has other kind of like backup things that he can, that can use the, for, as the neurotransmitters. So he's like, it doesn't really matter what you do to me. You know, it's kind of like a resistance is futile thing. So then Bogey goes, and after he gives us that nice villain explanation, he goes and pulls out this little, like, handheld sickle in his one hand and this five kilogram weight in the other hand, right? Uh, which I think roughly translates to about 10 pounds, 10 or 11 pounds. Anyway, so he winds up going and pulling one of these, these bad boys out, and he's got it in each hand, but because he can manipulate his bones and has so many of them, he explained that's why he was able to do that whole thing where he like went and it looked like he punched across and he came back and hit him with this regular regular punch. And that's what Takamaru is going, and that's why he couldn't predict some of his moves based on normal, because he was, everything he's learned is based on normal human makeup and movement, you know what I mean? A human cannot go and move like this with a punch and then be able to twist it back and, and give any type of force coming back around. This dude can dislocate stuff and his bones are basically as flexible as like rubber, you know what I mean? It's just, it's really creepy and neat, I guess, too, but... Anyway, so he winds up going and using this uh, this five pound thing. He starts spinning around. He tries to use it as basically like a like a chain and sickle uh, because of the way he's able to use and manipulate his body. And he starts tearing Takamaru up, man. And it's really a shame because I like Takamaru, but for the most part, I mean, he's getting his ass handed to him this entire uh, this entire chapter for the most part. And uh, then he winds up going and coming at him with a couple of bottle openers in different shots. Bottle opener, bottle opener, and he's popping you know bones out left and right. But it doesn't matter because Boki's got so many. It doesn't matter, right? 
So what he's doing though is I think he's looking for a weakness. He's trying to pinpoint something that actually will, you know, that actually will affect or hurt Bogey, you know. But Takamaru winds up, like I said, he takes a, a real bad beating. I mean, there's a point where Bogey winds up hitting him, and I mean, he is just, he's, he's slashed, bloody, beaten, and I mean, he's just, boom, falls to the ground. He's laying there about to lose consciousness, and all of a sudden, man, it kicks in that training. I like the guys that have sort of like that, almost like that spiritual or like martial arts, ninja, whatever type of training you want to say, but people who are very focused mentally and who are able to kind of use that inner chi uh, you know that that you hear so many talk about and, and, and there's many different religions based around that but many of the martial arts things like that uh, a lot of it really is about that sort of inner focus and that inner strength inner peace anyway this dude kind of calls he, he you know he calls on something from down deep and uh, winds up remembering uh, the you know what what was a uh, lesson that was taught to him by his master and uh, about basically having this focus and this and that and everything else and the whole chapter is called pre-shot routine which we know is the thing that he goes through before they do something and then they can go and actually do it with more accuracy and force and everything else so he goes and he stands up right and bogey's just like what how are you even standing you know and then he's like whatever no matter i got something to finish with you anyway and he try go starts to close the distance and and takamaro is doing his you know and he's starting to do his pre-shot routine and bogey's like doesn't matter what kind of chant you use i'm still gonna you know i'm still gonna i'm gonna end this now i'm gonna kill you right and he's over there and he's doing this thing. And as Bogey comes up to him, he takes his hand and just goes, and just, I mean, puts it right through him. And I don't know what it is with people in this in this series and just wanting to just stick their hand right inside of another man, but whatever. <laughs> it's a little bit goofy, uh, but it certainly gets the job done as far as just, you know, <laughs> bloodying the shit out of somebody or severely wounding somebody if you hit a major organ. So he jams his hand into him, right? And Takamaru's like, that chant that I was doing was actually my pre-shot routine. I was building all my focus and concentration so I could basically, so I could take whatever whatever punishment you were about to deal me, right? And I, which I like, and it kind of goes into the flashback about, you know, and, and his master's like, and you, you lack focus and you this and that, you know. So, but it all kind of comes full circle with him it, through these flashbacks and then coming out of them. So then I love it because the chapter winds up ending up shortly after that. So Bogey goes and he's just like, now Bogey's starting to freak a little bit thinking in his head because he's like, man, I must have plunged my hand too far. Anyway, I can't even pull my hand out, right? So Takamaru is just goes and he's just like, yeah. Every time that I did that bottle opener to you and you thought that I was just being, it was a futile effort and everything else, I, I noticed that you that you flinched back or kind of pulled back in a certain manner, so like you were protecting something. So there is one bone that you do, you know, care about or that you do need that is a supporting structure bone or something like that, right? So then all of a sudden he goes and he charges his shit up and he does this, instead of doing a bottle opener, he does this freaking super move corkscrew deal, right? And they actually show a corkscrew. It's hilarious. Winds up doing this thing and then the chair chapter winds up ending off anyway so he winds up going and using this thing this corkscrew bro open but as he winds up doing this he actually dislodges and and you can see bogey's just shitting bricks there's like, right and takamara's like yeah <laughs> so anyway after he uses this corkscrew on him uh court bottle opener corkscrew style or whatever he actually pops uh, or, uh, that's where they showed it he actually pops a bone out of bogey woods man which i just thought <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was great because this was definitely one of those where it looked like Takamaru was going to get walked all over and somebody else was going to have to come save his ass on this one. But obviously Toriko and Match already have their hands full. Um, you know, so it, it's, it was not looking good over here, man. But what a nice turnaround and what a great way of actually putting pulling together a battle and being able to kind of pull that out in the end. And really, when it looked like he was just sort of just, just you know, futilely trying to hammer at him and throw anything he could at him he was actually trying to uh, kind of poke him almost for weaknesses you know so i thought it was very inventive and very thoughtful uh the way that you know obviously the way it was written depicted drawn and played out that's where the chapter leaves off though and my chapter question for you brothers and sisters is uh, really what are your thoughts on Takamaru and him being able to figure out, uh, you know, Bogey Woods and how to actually find a weakness within him? Um, I certainly, I personally liked it. I liked how he kind of used the whole focus, inner strength, inner peace thing to be able to take some damage after he had already gotten an idea, an idea of where he had to pinpoint, um, you know, to, to wind up taking him out. So, but I want to know what your thoughts are, I guess, overall on the fight. And then, of course, the depiction of the fight and just, uh, I guess, the tactics that Takamaro used uh, to win the fight or seemingly win the fight anyway. So, leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. And subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you. In the next one, nation.
Remember to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and even my other channel.